Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 477 of this podcast, which means mathematically that there have been 476 episodes before this one. Why would we uh, lie about that? And you're not going to go and check anyway, so there you go. So hello, everybody. First off, I don't know how many episodes, how many specific episodes we have left. Like I haven't counted. Yeah. Before we end the show in October on our 10 year anniversary. But I think that right now we should commit to whatever our last episode is, is, is episode 500. That we end on an even note. Even if we get to like four, episode 498, which I don't think we will. Before. Even if, like, we get to episode 500, then the episode before the episodes before those will have to be episode 499A, episode 499B, so that we really end on, like, a good note, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A nice round number. We're at 477 and also, now. Yeah. There's a good chance we could end on episode 500, but just in case we don't, this wouldn't be the first time we've effed with the episode numbers on this podcast, in in all honesty. so, And also, this whole podcast, after nearly 10 years doing this podcast, the whole, whole show is just one elaborate inside joke at this point. And so... If this is your first time listening to the podcast or watching the podcast, you're going to have to go back and listen to all the other 476 episodes. Yes, you are. How are you going to get Ray Meland Horse Erotica um, and all of our references to the TV show Jesse? Yes. You have to start with episode one. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to our opener, commonly <coughs> referred to as Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Not a sponsor. And so I have a few things that I wanted to bring up. Um... First off, Bunny killed a man. Yeah. Quite clearly. In, in my killed... in my role of patron saint of celebrity deaths. Hey. Yeah. Bunny has killed a man. And it's pretty amazing. We'll be talking about this more at the end of the show when we finally get to the point where we announce our big summer theme, which I'm very excited about. Uh, we will be watching a Fast and the Furious movie. Ratings are important. Yeah, ratings are so important. I feel like if we had gone with the summer theme that won, easily, hands down, won the polls, then that would be a good summer for the fans. But I feel like what we're doing now is we will be doing a summer for us, Bunny. It's our yes. last summer. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a summer for us. Yes. One last summer before we graduate high, before we move on to colleges. Before, we, you know, after graduating high school, this will be our last hurrah. So I'm really excited about that. So, I want to talk, first off, about dead popes. Talk about who? Let me... Dead popes. Okay. Um, first off, you added the to the beginning of that. That's a 90s band. We're the dead popes. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Sure. So, 
a few days ago, someone posted, well, a few weeks ago, someone posted this on Twitter. It's, it's Sophie of Coffee on Twitter. And she posted, quote, my favorite new factoid is that they hit dead popes on the head three times with a special dead hope, dead pope hammer just to ensure they are, in fact, dead. Okay. And there's a picture of an elaborate sort of silver and gold hammer. And so I had to get to the bottom of this. Now, this is what my Bing search gave me as the answer. And at first, it'll seem pretty cut and dry, but I, I believe that by the end of this explanation, you will have more questions than answers. Yeah. So um, I, I already have questions. Yeah. Oh, nice. <coughs> the claim that a deceased pope gets hit in the head with a special hammer to verify death is a myth. Okay, well, there you go. Cut and dry. Open and shut case. Guess we can close the lid on this unsolved yep, mystery. Yep, yep. That's, oh, wait, there's that's, more. That, that explains to me, because I was wondering, you know, if this was true, there would have to be a, a Vatican Black and Decker tie-in of some sort. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, no, this completely explains. It. Okay, it's just something we made up, something completely ridiculously false. We which we should have known just on the surface of it. But yes, we can completely put this whole hitting the head, hitting the Pope in the head with a hammer, you know, in a, in a very ritualistic whack-a-mole kind of way. We could put that to bed. Thank originally, God. the song, originally the song Maxwell silver hammer was called uh, Vatican's, Papal hammer. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, hold on. There's more, Bunny. There's more? There's more. Don't get your hopes up. The claim that a deceased pope gets hit in the head with a special hammer to verify death is a myth. Now get this next sentence. The Vatican has stated that this ritual has not been performed since possibly 1878. Okay. The hammer shown in social media posts is actually used to open a holy door in papal ceremonies. And traditionally, the Cardinal Camerlengo verifies the Pope's death by gently tapping the Pope's head with a silver hammer while calling out his baptismal name three times. But it's all a myth. Okay. But okay. doesn't this answer say that, like, oh, it's a myth. The Vatican has even said that it's a myth and hasn't happened since at least the 19th century. And yes, that's a picture of a hammer, but that hammer is used to, to open doors in papal ceremonies and also used to hit uh, dead popes over the head. That's n That doesn't mean it's a myth. No. Right? I'm really confused by by my Bing search here. I, I and 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 seriously, it just makes me want to know now how you open a door with a hammer. I have no idea, but what this says, like in big bold letters, this is a myth because it hasn't happened since 1878. That means it does happen. That yeah. it did happen. Yeah. That means that this is true, not a myth. I'm very confused about this. Anyway, what do you think? But, the but I, I, are? I think they, I think they should totally lean into it. You know, the the Catholic Church is not bringing in the revenue that it used to. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's it's leaving just, the church. It's just not. But if when the Pope dies, you put them through a Klingon pain ritual, I, I, I you can market this. You could I market think that this. Every, if I all the cardinals gather around the Pope with pain sticks and poke him to make sure he's really dead, we are on to something. It is a I brand that, new day for the Catholic Church. 
I think that every pope should have their body burned while the sad Star Wars music plays, just like Darth Vader. Oh, no, it's got to be Sad Hulk. Sorry. No. No, it's got to be the... And then get a bunch of fucking no. Ewoks. No, I disagree. To it's got it's got to be Yub Yub. And also, you know, you do have a point. Where is my official papal hammer? Yeah. You could get a whole line of religious tools at Home Depot. And it's like, "Oh, here's my here's your papal measuring tape." I'm down with that. They could just offer to highest bidder how many celebes would want in on that, says Queer Kitty. How many celebes would want in on that? Are are you suggesting that we sell people corpses? Oh my god, that's my metal band name. Yeah. We are people corpses! One, two, three, four! <laughs> This next song's called Robot of Fiction. You you managed to get two band names out of this. Yeah, I've already gotten two band names, so we're doing really good. Uh, Bunny, let me let me pull up my Twitter. I'm really proud of this. I started a new. I created a new genre of music. Okay. Uh, Wednesday morning. So Tuesday. Was it Tuesday or Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. So, so, uh, so maybe on Thursday I did it. Uh, it doesn't matter. I created a new genre of music. On May 8th, I went to the movie theater to see episode one, The Phantom Menace. Okay. Because it's like an anniversary or something. And, and so it was either watch that or. Kung Fu Panda 4, and I have no intention of watching that, so I went and I saw Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, in theaters. Uh, I had forgotten how much that movie sucks ass. Okay. At the end, there was a sneak peek of the Acolyte, but to be honest, new Star Wars does nothing for me. No. I loved the first three. Which I think is well established in this show. Yeah, I watched the first three. The prequels were okay. And then I really liked Solo and like the second of the three new sequels. But beyond that, I just don't really care. I don't want to watch a Star Wars TV show. I I, I don't care. I just, I really don't care. So I saw a preview of the Acolyte, and it's like, okay, um, apparently Trinity from the Matrix is in it. Good for her. But beyond that, I don't really care. I forgot how much The Phantom Menace sucks. Because, like, here's uh, Queen Amidala, and she looks like she's like 17. Yeah. And here's five year old baby Anakin. Who's the worst actor in the freaking world? And then Jar Jar, hideous. And some of the CGI was laughable. I I posted a video on Twitter where I explained that when you see the first three Star Wars movies, so much of that is real. So much of the set is actually there. So many of the aliens were created as, as suits. And then you go and you watch the prequels and you watch all the new Star Wars and you you can just tell that so much of it is computers. Yeah. Especially The Phantom Menace. Watching that, it felt less like I was watching a live-action Star Wars film and more like I'm watching an animated movie with a few live-action yeah. characters. Yeah, that's, Basically, why, that's why people are continually going under the mistaken impression that Liam Neeson is in this movie. He is not. He's not. He is just another computer generated character. Yeah, he's like a he's like um a Jedi version of the Tupac hologram. Yes. So so there's that. 
So what I'm saying is, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace is the Three Caballeros of Star Wars. It's primarily animated. Every yeah. once in a while, a real person shows up. So, so there's that. Uh, so, the next day, May 9th, that was, so it was uh, last Thursday, I created a new genre of music. Because there's a website out there. It's called suno.com. S-U-N-O dot com. You sign up and you get... Uh, tokens and with those tokens you can have ai write you music and i've been having a really fun time with that i wrote a great song which i absolutely love it's without a doubt one of the greatest songs ever written and it's called i want to get the right title okay i wrote a rap song i had ai write me a rap song called Real gangsters ain't afraid to cry after shitting themselves at a Denny's in Scottsdale. Okay. And it's one of my favorite songs of all time. Eleanor wrote a, had AI write a Dr. Seuss rap song called Green Eggs and Rhymes. Yeah. I had AI write a country ballad about the life of Ed Wood. It is surprisingly good. And I wrote a song called Maylin's funky beat that I will be using uh, for my live performance at Oklahoma City's big three-day Pride Festival. So the next day I wake up and I still have like Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace on my brain. And I loved it when it came out, but then again, I was very young and I was very drunk and I was very high. And I think I just like movie spectacles. So it wasn't that I liked it. It's that I was in a big group at a sold out movie and everybody liked it. But it took me a while to realize that the movie sucked. So I still had Star Wars on the brain. And I had AI write a sensual love ballad for Jar Jar Binks. Okay. The song is called Misa Make Sweet Love. Okay. It is probably the greatest song of all time. Okay. The creepy part is I, I understand what people are saying about artificial intelligence because the song that it wrote for me, it sounds remarkably like Beyonce. Okay. But let me read to you the lyrics that AI wrote me for Misa Makes Sweet Love. Are you ready, bud? Okay. Okay. Misa thinking about you, and Misa can't deny. The way you's looking at Misa, Misa feeling oh so hot. Misa want to hold you close. Misa want to feel your touch. Making sweet love, Misa love you oh so much. And then you get into the chorus. Misa want to love you, Misa want to hold you tight. Making sweet love all through the night. Misa want to kiss you. Misa want to feel you near. Making sweet love. Misa got no fear. It's a really sweet song. I'm um, feeling a little choked up, actually. You know, just yeah. I'm sorry for all the women who are little, watching this podcast know. who are now who have now become a water park. I apologize for that. So then I decided to keep going. I wrote a song called. I had AI write me a song called Jar Jar's Country Gungan Blues. So this is a twangy acoustic country song. Well, y'all want to hear about the life of a Gungan in space. Jar Jar Binks here. Going to tell you my story with grace. I'm a simple creature living on a planet called Naboo. But now I'm floating around the galaxy trying to find my cue. Trapped in a land of humans, no waterfalls or swamps in sight. With my floppy ears and clumsy feet, always causing a fight. They call me clumsy, but I got a heart that's gold. Just trying to fit in this alien world. Misa getting oh so cold. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So then I decided to write a, a, a punk song. 
This is a fast-paced, angry punk song called Oi We the Gungan. Okay. So this one is uh it I wanted like an angry punk song, but it gave me like a like a pop punk song, but that's okay. Gungans get no love, we always get the shove. Jedi's hating on us, thinking they're above. Misa getting angry, Misa fighting back. Take down the Jedi, put them off track. Gungan's gonna rise, no more taking lives. With our big ol' ears, we hear all the cries. Wisa sticking together, Wisa take a stand. Show the galaxy, we the real command. So I've created a new type of music that I call Gungan Core. Okay. And I really do feel it's going to take over the world. It is really going to take over. These are some of the best songs in the world. You try and listen to Misa Make Sweet Love and try not to get aroused. Impossible. Impossible. Jar Jar Binks is like space. Uh, not Snoop Dogg. Jonathan, come on. No, uh, what's the... Jar Jar Binks is alien Barry White. That's just a fact. So I think everybody is going to be getting on the Gungan Core wagon. Also, in uh, other I'm, news... I'm, I'm starting to worry about you now. Okay. It, this is, this I, is huge. This is it. This is, this is the point right here. Okay. Um, well, I've got one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I need to find it. Shit. Where is it? Okay. I gotta pull it up. This drives me insane. This drives me insane. Okay. So Chris Pine has a movie that's about to be uh, widely released. It's... I've already called... heard bad things about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called Pool Man. And... It premiere. It he like wrote, produced, directed, and stars in it, and he plays like a a stoner loser nobody guy who just cleans pools, but he just yeah. cleans one pool, and he decides to solve a mystery. It's kind of like Raymond Chandler meets The Big Lebowski, and uh, so. So here's an article. The reviews are nothing short Pool of man, right? Pool man, all one word. There were a, so it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, and uh, a, there were apparently numerous walkouts, and multiple mainstream outlets said it was not only the worst film of that festival season, but that it would probably be the worst film in any festival season in which it was released. Now, here's the crazy part. Chris yeah. Pine describes the movie. Okay? Chris Pine, a human being born, as far as we know, on the planet Earth, described his movie in this way. That is definitely not what you want to hear about your film that was, quote, that as Pine described the film at a recent screening in New York City, the film was, quote, born from a giggle. Okay. Made, made with the softest of puppy Labrador licks to the face and presented with a giant hug of compassion. First off, uh, I think Chris Pine might have written the song Happiness Pie from the Kids in the Hall Brain Pan. Okay. Go see my Maybe. movie, Pool Man. I, I bet mean, you're wondering what's in this pool. Well, there's two cups love. So a what cup happened from of, there, Chris? A cup and a half of understanding. A tablespoon of good old-fashioned compassion. Yeah. Sugar to taste. And the ovens are our hearts. It, what type of insane person describes a movie that way? Who the fuck, what adult describes a movie this way? 
Chris Pine, you are officially on notice. This man might be a fucking psychopath. Because no one describes a movie that way. Even I, I can't think of any movie that you could say was born from a giggle made with the softest of puppy Labrador licks to the face and presented with a giant hug of compassion, except maybe a Serbian film. Yeah. I don't know. So, I, I think you got to give Chris Pine a, a little bit of leeway. He knows who he is. You know? He knows who he is. He knows he's not the actor who's getting the first call. You know? Yeah. He's not the actor who'd be like, oh my god, only Chris Pine can play this role. Yeah, he knows he's not he's the not first that guy. You he's know, not he's even one guy, of the first Chris's to get that call. He's the guy who who you call pretty much when you've run out of everybody else. When you run out of other Chris's. Yeah. When yeah. you run out of other Chris's and when you when you decide, you know, damn, yeah. we have really had bad luck with uh Dungeons and Dragons kind of stuff. We don't want to risk one of our good actors in that. How about we cast Chris Pine? I like the Dungeons and Dragons movie. I the thought Chris it was Pine just movie? Pine. I think it's pretty yeah. fucking awesome. I hear they're making another one. I want to see I, it. I think it's just fine. And I'm surprised it wasn't as successful as I thought it should have been. But It's just a bunch of fun. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. But the more... The more time passes in my life, the more Don't Worry, Darling was the weirdest fucking movie I have seen in quite some fucking time. Yeah. The, the Shyamalan of that movie is fucking insane. Like, I really like the movie until you find out what the actual plot is. I barely Once remember. you find out the mystery of the film, it's like, oh, okay... I don't like this anymore. Can we go back to trying to figure out the mystery? Because that was fun. Yeah. In other I, news... I barely remember it. I remember yeah. he was in it. I remember yeah. Harry Styles was in it and the May Queen. Yeah, it had a secret Proud Boys sort of... Um... Uh, what's that guy? Andrew Tate sort of... Yeah twist to it. In other news, in Las Vegas recently, a robot was struck and killed by a self-driving Tesla car. Okay. And here we all are, preparing for AI to destroy the world, but um, I'm pretty sure this is what Alanis Morissette was singing about. Yes. Yes, it is. Suddenly, I feel like... If a robot uh, gets run down and killed by a self-driving Tesla... Yeah, that's Alanis basically Morissette like rain on your wins. wedding day. Yeah. I've never felt more like Ken Watanabe in my life. <laughs> but just like Ken Watanabe <clears throat> in uh, the first legendary Studios Godzilla film, I kind of feel like let them fight. You know? Like, shit, if AI's gonna fight against AI, I think we humans are good here. Yeah. And again, I like to say, a lot of people are out there saying that AI's gonna destroy the world. Yes. But I did write a song. I did have AI write me a song ab about shitting your pants at a Denny's in Scottsdale. Yes. So, it's a give and a take. Okay, you know? but, but why is AI going to destroy the world any more readily than what humans are doing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously, can AI do any worse? I mean, we are literally looking at election where our choices are genocide Joe, the Christo fascist dictator who wants to build concentration camps all over America and kill his political enemies, or the guy with brain worms. Yeah, or the guy with brain worms. 
And from where I'm sitting here, honestly, the guy with brain worms is is probably the most moral choice. Sure, he might have fucked a couple of kids on Epstein Island. Sure. Is that a genocide, though? This Why is the, would you say this something? This is the three-ring fucking circus we're living in these days. Funny, why would you say something so controversial and yet so brave? So, so he's a complete lunatic. What do you want from him? He's got brain worms. Yeah, yeah. Are the others not lunatics? And I love the fact that, like, the brain worm thing was a, something that was said in a divorce proceeding in 2012 under the under the uh hey i can't be expected to pay alimony to my bitch ex-wife because a worm died in my brain and now i'm hearing yeah sure a worm died in my brain but the worm only destroyed the part of me that pays alimony yeah not the presidential part of my brain this is the hellscape that we live in in this the year of our Lord 2020. Yes. It's insane. Yes. It's insane. We should bring Warren G. Harding back to life. And he can pilot this country. <laughs> you know what? It, the world's going to end anyway. Let's just let's just start switching out. Let's give cats a chance. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, you know. For like a year, and then we'll get the cats out, and we'll put nothing but um, those arm wrestling robots that you used to get at Radio Shack. Yeah, those claws. You know, and then after that, we can get hamsters running the country. They can't damage this country more than we've already damaged it. No. You know. So, uh, and one final thing. Uh, I have an older brother, and he's an asshole. So that is it for Jeff this week. Hope you enjoyed it. We are going to take a short break. And when we come back, not only are we talking about this week's movie, Robot Dreams, uh, finally, we're going to get to the answer. Do androids dream of electric sheep? The answer may surprise you. Uh, and man, if you're a dog and you're reading Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, that is a much different book. Okay. I would, because he the dog is reading Stephen King's Pet Cemetery at one point in time. Oh yes, yes he is. Yes he is. Yeah, and so <coughs> if you're in a world where all animals are alive and humans don't exist, that is a much scarier book i think so uh but also we will be announcing our theme this year okay and uh it... wow a surprise entrant from out of nowhere thanks buddy <laughs> very excited part. very excited for this summer yeah and you know what there are some films that we've already seen we're seeing them again okay we're seeing them again we can't do this theme summer and not watch, you know, uh, Star Crash and shit. But, okay. But we're going to take a short, maybe we should take a short break and then we can discuss that. Should we take a break, Bunny? We should take a break. Okay, I concur. I didn't ask you, Eleanor. I asked Bunford Williamson. The guy who killed someone with his mind powers. Yes, we'll be talking about it all summer. <coughs> we will be right back with more of the Pope on film in two and two. Two and two. Do 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 do. This is the outro. Do 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 do. If this was late night with the devil, there'd be like some bizarre artwork, and it would say more to come. Yeah. Do 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 do. Could he pop a do out and break? And then the screen does this. 